A reading from our Old Testament lesson. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Perhaps when he woke up his son, he had it on his mind what a day he had ahead of him. Perhaps he combed his son's hair. Perhaps in waking him up, he knew that it would be the last time that he would wake up his son. Perhaps when he clothed his son, he knew that it would be the last garment that he would ever wear. Perhaps there was inner tur turmoil, turmoil within his heart because he knew that his son was not going to be long in this world. Perhaps he took his son by the hand and he gave him the good news that they would be offering a sacrifice to God. Perhaps as the donkey was being saddled, as the two young men went, who were going with them prepared for the journey, were excited themselves. Maybe, just maybe, Isaac was excited to get to go and worship God. But then we look at Abraham. What do you think was going through his mind? And here's why I ask. Because I think that we take these Bible stories and we create them in their own little vacuum and we say, oh, look at this little tale that I can apply to my life. Look at this story that I can take from it whatever I want and do with it whatever I want. But here's the reality. Abraham was told by God that he was going to kill his son. He was going to take his son and with a knife prepare him for the slaughter, for the sacrifice. His son, and notice the words here that God uses, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. There's two qualifiers in there. Your son, your only son, and then whom you love. With those two qualifiers, we see how much Abraham loves his son. He loves God all the more. If I were to ask you, since this has not happened in a vacuum, it doesn't, it's not an isolated incident, it is a historical fact that this happened. If I were to say to you, could you take your son, your only son, whom you love, and plunge a knife into his chest and lay him upon an altar. I don't know anyone who could do that. I couldn't. We can pretend, I suppose, and say, well, I would do that for God, but would we? Would we really? And yet, perhaps, as Abraham put his son on the donkey, he looked at his son and he smiled. And he said, I love you. After all, this is the son, the only son, in whom he loves. Took him upon the mountain, 
bound him, rose the knife above the child, and then we hear an angel of the Lord say, Abraham, Abraham. And of course he says, here I am. And God says, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For I now, for now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, again, your only son from me. And so Isaac was spared. And yet when they turned and they looked, they saw a ram whose horns were caught in the thicket, in the briary thicket. And God provided them a sacrifice. And in that sacrifice, their sins were forgiven. Isaac was saved and Abraham remained a true man of God. A one who would not even withhold his son from God. Perhaps he hugged his son after that very incident. Perhaps he hugged Isaac so tightly because he knew from the night before that he would have to kill his son. Perhaps he kissed his son for his son had been bared, had been spared. There is another. A boy who was born just like we all were. And perhaps his mother kissed him, swaddled him, and loved him. Perhaps as he grew in stature, he began to enter into the temple and teach others, even though he was not but 13 or 14 years old. This, this one is Jesus, the Son, the only Son of God in whom He loves. And so that Son of God, that Son, the only Son, the only begotten Son that we confess in the Creed goes forth. Perhaps Christ knew as he was going forth in the journey that he would be the ram who is caught in the thicket. And that thicket would soon become a crown of thorns and he would be sacrificed. There would be no, Joseph, Joseph, do not kill this man. No, the reality is, is that God let that sacrifice happen. Christ Himself. There was no knife that was stayed to Christ. Christ Himself had to die. And He had to die for the forgiveness of all of our sins. There was no one calling Abraham, Abraham. But rather, there was one calling, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For the full wrath of God was poured out onto His Son, His only begotten Son, in whom He loves. He poured that out on Him for one reason alone, so that He would be the absolute last sacrifice. And in that last sacrifice, your sins are forgiven. And your name is called out as Abraham's was. Gavin, Gavin, go see the sacrifice. To each of you, come see the sacrifice. The one in whom was in the thicket the one in whom the crown of thorns was placed upon his head. Come and see the sacrifice of Christ. And in that sacrifice, see the merit 
and the forgiveness of sins that is in you now through baptism, where he calls our name. May our dear Lord be with you as you continue to come to this church time after time after time to see the sacrifice, to see the merits of Christ. And when you eat and when you drink, you know that they come from there, from Christ's own side, from his sacrifice. Jesus, Jesus, remain with us. Give us your blood. Give us your body. That we would have the forgiveness of sins. And so we do. So come, let us eat and let us drink. For the forgiveness of sins is at hand. Amen. Now may the peace which surprises all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.